In today's video, gentlemen, I'm going to be making you an offer that you can't refuse. I'm making an offer you don't refuse. Don't worry. Seriously, gents, I don't mean you no harm. We're just going to have fun here. I'm going to break out the best style moments from The Godfather. You all know Michael Corleone. Let's start things off by looking at Michael Corleone's Havana suit. So the setting here is 1958, but what I love about this, just look at this outfit. Look at the way it's put together. He could step out of that time period and walk into a place today and easily be the best dressed man. Where am I? So I want to mention in The Godfather 2, all the costumes were designed by Theodora Van Runkle and she did a great job going with classic designs, classic looks and when you see this suit combination, what do we notice? First up, it's a very muted combination of colors. So what I love about this muted clothing combination is it keeps us focused in on the face. Michael Corleone played by Al Pacino, he's a medium contrast individual. What this means is his hair color is dark, his skin is medium color similar to mine and he could wear a wide range of clothing but this clothing combination, it actually works really well with drawing our attention to his eyes, to his face. He's there for negotiation. He's trying to figure out what Mr. Hyman Roth is up to even though Hyman's walking around without a shirt on to show, hey, I've got nothing to hide but we know he does. Point being is he's showing up there and his clothing isn't going to do the talk and he did go in with dark colors. Now where we do see color is around the neck. So we see that ascot or maybe it's a cravat. Correct me if you know the answer down in the comments, but we see the gold, we see the brown, we see maybe a little bit of orange. What I love about this again is it's drawing attention to the face. The only other place that we see color is when we get down to the shoes. We see that he's wearing dark socks, he's got brown penny loafers, again keeping it very casual, but the eyes are going to go up and down very quickly. Maybe we'll notice his shoes, but we're again going to be drawn to the face. Now in case you're wondering, this suit has a lot of interesting details about it. The most interesting one, which most people don't know, is that it's been sold twice at auction. But what if you just wanted to recreate that suit? You wanted to go to your custom clothier and say, hey, I want this suit here. First up, you got to make sure you get the right fabric. You want to be looking for a tan with a cream Glen check. Let me go ahead and bring up the pattern right here. This is a Glen check. It's a classic pattern, but what's really cool about this combination right here is that from a distance, it looks like a solid. Now, when it comes to the cut of the suit, this is neither an Italian or an American cut. It is not slim fitting like an Italian suit, yet it's not a full sack suit. So what we see is something that's a hybrid of the two. So again, when we look at the details, what do we notice? First up, the padding on the shoulders. It's relatively slight. It's not heavy padding. It's not light, no padding like we would see on some Italian suits. Also, it's a two button suit. Now in the sleeves, we see that they're fitting actually relatively well, not super loose. And at the sleeve head, which is right up here, we notice that there is a roped design. Also, when we go and we look at the lapels, we see a notch lapel, but what's interesting is there's no vents. That's an Italian feature. Most American suits are going to have a single vent in the back, but this jacket had no vents. As for the jacket cuffs, we only saw three buttons on this jacket and when you look at the pockets, they're going to be straight flap normal pockets as we would see on almost any jacket out there. Now his trousers are made from the same fabric as the jacket. A suit, remember, is always a jacket and trousers made from the same exact material. We notice he has a flat front, no pleats on these trousers. They're a little bit higher waisted. So when you wear higher waisted trousers, these are made perfectly for suspenders. But with these trousers, we also know that they have loops for a belt. But in any case, you wouldn't want to wear the belt or the suspenders at the same time. You would want to wear either one or the other. Now let's look at the shirt. You'll notice he didn't go with a white dress shirt. He went with a white polo shirt. A white polo shirt, that's going to be a sport design, very informal, but again, he's wearing a jacket over it and it works because of the environment. Now let's have a little bit of fun. Let's talk about what not to wear, how not to dress, and let's look at poor Fredo. You're my brother, Fredo. You don't have to apologize to me. So we all know how this ends, but man, when we see him at the first communion wearing what appears to be black tie, tuxedo, whatever he wanted to call this combination, a number of things are striking. First up, the fit is totally off. And I think that they definitely did this on purpose. They wanted to show that this guy is basically a clown. Now, first up, let's talk about that Madras jacket. Actually, if it had fit him, and if he had worn it with more confidence, could he have pulled it off? Would it have worked for black tie? I think the answer 
is actually yes. Now, Madras is a classic pattern, comes out of India, has a lot of history, but the thing is with black tie, you're allowed to break one rule. There are rules to how you should dress for black tie, but if you understand the rules and then you rock that one rule you're breaking with confidence, I think you can pull it off. You can change up the color of the tie if everything else is spot on. You can change up the shoes. You can have a little bit of fun with, you know, maybe even the shirt you're wearing. But I do think, yeah, a man with confidence who knew what he was doing here, but the thing is, Fredo didn't know what he was doing. And when we look at this combination with the poor fit, with the oversized jacket, yeah, it just did not look like a good combination, even though I like the pattern and I think the right person could pull it off. Now, looking at the rest of his black tie combination, you know, again, he's following the rules here. He just is off on the fit. When we look at the black tie itself, it probably could have been a little bit better tied and it shouldn't have been a jar like it was. But again, they're going for, I think, a little bit more of the clownish look. When we look at the shirt, perfectly fine, maybe a little bit large. The trousers, they're black. He's following the rules there. He even has a cummerbund. If you're not familiar, cummerbund, again, comes out of India. A lot of these actually clothing styles come out of whenever the English were over there and they adopted a number of Indian styles. So, shout out to my friends over in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. I know you guys are out there. So, now let's jump back over to Michael Corleone and let's talk about his first communion suit. Thank you. Now, it's not his first communion. It's his son, Anthony. Great name, by the way. But uh, so, Anthony thinks that this is about him. No, it's not about him. It's about his dad wanting to be able to do business. And that's what the suit is all about. My offer is this. Nothing. This is about business. This is about, hey, I am here to get work done. Let's get into the details on this silk suit that is absolutely beautiful. So, the first thing you'll notice about this suit is the fabric. It's gray, it's made from silk, has specks of white, specks of black. It is a very unique fabric. And here's the thing with suits. The price can go up astronomically depending on the suit and the rarity of it. I used to own a custom clothier. I understand that, okay, sometimes fabric can cost $30 a yard. Other times, it is $3,000 a yard for fabric. This is a suit that simply is able, it oozes money and you're able just to send the message to people to know, this is my suit. I am the man. Let's get to business. Now, with the style details, he doesn't need to really do anything here and he doesn't. Two button. We've got single breasted. We have three buttons right here on the sleeve. Pockets are all what we would expect. And again, no vent. This is going to be a very similar style. I think they used the same cost. They used the same costume designer throughout, but she probably went to the same clothier and same place to get all the clothing. And they decided to go with no vents. Basically, it allows the clothing to fit closer and to hold everything closer to the body. Single vents in the back. That was kind of the American version of doing it the cheap way and to be able to mass manufacture. The most expensive vents to manufacture are the double vents. We see this on English suits. And what's great about the double vent is actually you could jump on a horse or when you're walking. It just simply looks better, but it's it's by far the most expensive way to build the vents of a suit. Now, the trousers here, of course, made from the same material, a little bit higher rise, similar. These are, again, made to be worn with suspenders or even a belt. And when we look at these right here, just a very clean, they actually have no back pockets. And I like that look right there because it just gives a cleaner silhouette. And let's talk about the dress shirt. Nothing fancy here. A white, simple, clean dress shirt with point collar, simple placket on the front, no pockets. And what I love about dress shirts like this is you can dress them up, you can dress them down, incredibly versatile. I think in every man's wardrobe, you should at least have a few go-to white dress shirts that you can wear to any occasion. Now, speaking of the belt and the shoe combination, let's look at that black belt with gray tassel loafers. You don't need to wear a gray belt. A lot of people think they got to match the belt exactly with the shoes. It's nice if you can, but as long as you get close and whenever you have kind of an odd combination, you have shoes that are gray or shoes maybe that are light brown. Yes, you could wear a dark brown with those medium brown. You could go with gray. You can wear black and that's going to be the right combination there. So, yeah, he pulls it off. Now, let's talk about the white suit of Don Finucci, aka the black hand. When you wear a white suit, you are going to stand out from the crowd. Another guy that pulled off a white suit in real life and made it a signature card, Tom Wolf, an amazing writer, again, understanding the power of color. Now, why do most guys avoid white when it comes to trousers, it comes to shoes? I'll tell you why. We don't want to get it dirty. We are very practical. It's all about confidence. It's all about being able to pull it off. And I'll tell you, the black hand had confidence. He walked 
the streets of New York and he owned it. He knew that everyone had to pay respect. And when we looked at the combination, it just wasn't the suit. He brought the hat, yes, the white hat. I mean, the guy, the only thing that wasn't white was that outer protective coat. Now, the time period is 1917, 1920, New York City. What's going on in World War I? That's just wrapping up. We're about to go into the roaring 20s, and we have a lot of Italian immigrants coming over. Italians, Irish, a lot of these immigrants coming over at this time period were actually not viewed as true Americans. They were viewed, yeah, people didn't like them. A lot of people, they tried to put them into certain birds boroughs and areas. So, this was prime for this man to be able to come in and like a peacock, be able to walk the streets and to intimidate. It wasn't so much that he was physically strong. We never see him throwing people around, but we see the way he walks, the way he struts, the way he shows off his color and the bright, you know, that white right there is what sets this guy apart and sends this signal of high status. Now, let's talk about the style details of his clothing. So, do we see anything that really stands out? The answer is no. It's the color, again, that does all the talking. So, when we see the jacket, it's got a notch lapel. It's got a three-button, single-breasted jacket. What's a three-button jacket? So, it's a little bit more formal because you have the option of buttoning that top button. Middle is always buttoned when you're standing. The bottom button, never. But this jacket right here, there's really nothing that stands out except for the color. Trousers, very simple. We actually don't even see a cuff. We see just a pair of straight, uh, well-fitted trousers. He's a little bit larger of a man, so I do think he would have gone with something higher-waisted, maybe even wore suspenders. That would have worked for that time period. When we look at the shirt, a simple white shirt, but it's the vest that I really like. He didn't decide to go for any contrast here. He went all white. Now, when we look at his shoes, what do we see? These off-white leather slippers. Now, slippers, you and they are some of the most formal shoes out there. Yes, believe it or not, slippers, not the kind you wear at home, but slippers that you could slip on and off are going to be very simple in design. They're actually made to go with a black tie. Now, I've talked about his white fedora, but let's talk about jewelry. So, he had a ring on his pinky, which was, you know, you came and kissed it and you showed respect. And let's talk about that gold tooth. Now, it wasn't so much about grills at that time period. It was just simply gold was viewed as something that's very valuable, very expensive. And most people, People, they just simply didn't get anything in their teeth. They just got them out and they were toothless. This guy had the money and he showed the world, yeah, I'm a little bit older. I've lost some of my teeth. I like my sweet foods and I can afford to actually get them replaced. Now, let's talk about the revenge suit. And we've got Robert De Niro playing a young Vito Corleone as he goes back to his childhood home. And let's just say that, yeah, he's got some scores to settle. Como te chiamo? Chiamo Vito Corleone. Vito Corleone. <laughs> Te begiaste o nome desto país, eh? So first up we noticed the color that rust brown with a pinstripe here. It's a color we rarely see. So this was obviously custom made. It's supposed to represent I think that time period and we notice it with the lapels. Not only are they wide, but we've got peak lapels on a 3 button jacket. What does that do to the lapels? It forces them high and right here. What does this do? It builds up the chest. Could you pull this off nowadays? This definitely wouldn't be your first, second, or even third suit, but if you are wearing a suit on a daily basis, you could have something like this made and it is going to stand out. It's going to look amazing. We also have a very buttoned up look thanks to not only the three buttons in the on the jacket, but that high vest. Notice we only see that the shirt peeking out here. This is very much with the time period. Shirts, were, it was very expensive to get white shirts clean and it was much easier to simply layer things, especially with darker suits. They could get a little bit dirty. No one's going to notice. You just hang it up, you brush your suit off and you wear it multiple times and then go get it clean. So, again, when we're looking at the fit and design of this suit, this is something actually is going to fit his body closer. This is a young Vito Corleone. He wants to show that he has wealth, that he has strength. He's put together. He's got that nice necktie right there. Overall, the combination that we see here is a man that has money, a man that is in power, and a man that's there to maybe to settle a few debts. No! Now, a few other style details to note, that brown fedora. Why would you ever want to start wearing a hat? Because it's going to make you look taller. It really brings the whole outfit together. And when we look at the necktie, he's got that black necktie with small dots on it. Notice the tie pin. 
details like that. It just keeps the whole outfit together right there. And let's look down at his feet. Notice he's wearing dress boots, really great looking derbies right there, dark brown, cap toe, amazing looking boots. And what have I told you about boots, guys? When you wear boots, you stand taller, you feel taller. And in this case, Robert De Niro was taller because of the heel. And by the way, this suit was recently sold at auction for $30,000. So what video to watch next? How about this one right here where I break out the Kingsman style? Absolutely love this movie. And uh, yeah, the style is a lot of fun. So go check it out, guys. I will link to it down in the description.